Hi, I'm Jeff Wimmett, and I'm an applications engineer here at Altera. Are power consumption and device cost two of your toughest design challenges? If they are, spend a little time with us to learn about a development kit featuring a low-cost FPGA that addresses both of these challenges. Our Cyclone 4 GX Transceiver Starter Kit is ideal for fast-tracking development of high-volume applications where you need to drive down both cost and power consumption. The kit's key component is our Cyclone 4 GX FPGA. This is the lowest cost, lowest power FPGA with integrated transceivers at speeds up to 3.125 gigabits per second. Cyclone 4 GX FPGAs are also the FPGA industry's only low-cost devices that feature PCI Express by 4 functionality. In this video, we'll walk you through a PCI Express reference design that demonstrates how easy it is to use this functionality. And we'll introduce you to our Cyclone 4 GX Transceiver Starter Kit. This starter kit has most everything you'll need to get started with a new design. The featured device is an EP4 CGX15, which is shipping now in production. First today, we'll show you the board update portal. This is one of two designs that ships with all of our latest development kits. We'll use this portal to introduce the PCI Express performance demo. And finally, we'll show the board test system. That's the other design that ships with all of our latest kits, and it includes a power monitor. So let's get started. The board update portal enables you to view a web page that's stored in flash memory on your development board. When you connect your board to a DHCP-enabled network via the included Ethernet cable, the board obtains an IP address from the server. By typing that address into your internet browser, you can view that web page. On this page, we can mouse over the board to look at some board features. So here's the configuration status and setup elements the components and interfaces, the memory, and so on. Also, on the right side of this web page, you'll find links to useful design resources on Altera.com. For example, you can click here to go to the dev kit web page on Altera.com. That's where you can download new reference designs. And we'll keep updating that page with the latest reference designs, so it's a good place to visit regularly. Another key feature of this board update portal is the ability to write a new design into Flash. The flash device on your board consists of three pages. One page has the board update portal design in it. The other two pages are meant to store user-defined FPGA images. The portal allows you to write your new designs to one of these two user-defined pages. Now, I've already downloaded the PCI Express reference design from Altera.com, so we'll use the board update portal now to write that design to the user portion of flash memory. As you can see, I push this Browse button, select the .flash file, and then click Upload. And now the design is being written into the flash memory on our board. You can see the progress on the LCD display screen, and it will inform you when the design has been successfully written to flash. And you can see from this page here that we've successfully written this design to flash. So we'll go ahead and install the board, like so. Then we power up this PC and the monitor here. That just takes a second. And then we'll click the PCI Express demo. And then we'll click Run Endpoint DMA. And you can see by these bar graphs here the number of data transactions that are taking place. And that's the PCI Express performance demo. The last demo we'll show today is the board test system, or BTS. This is the other design that ships with the Cyclone 4 Transceiver Starter Kit. The BTS interface can help you verify that your board is functioning properly. We'll launch the .exe file to open the BTS interface on the PC. And you can see the board test system GUI here has tabs for each one of the different components on the board. We'll be focusing on the SMA tab today. It's important to note that the SMAs are not enabled in the factory default board configuration. In order to route the transceiver from the FPGA to the SMAs, we actually have to make a couple of changes on the board, two resistors, two capacitors. You can refer to the user guide for more details on that. 
Basically, these changes just route the transceiver to the SMAs rather than to the SGMII Ethernet 5 that's on your board. Going back to the GUI here, let's select the PRBS pattern. We'll go with PRBS 15 for this. And we'll push the start button. And then if you'll notice, I've connected the SMA output from the board through these SMA cables to this scope. And on the scope, you can observe the eye diagram that's being output from the Cyclone 4 device. Now before we wrap this up, I want to show you one more thing. The power monitor. The power monitor displays the current and power being consumed by each of the voltage rails on the Cyclone 4 GX device. And all the power monitor circuitry is external to the FPGA, so you can configure it with any design you like and still observe the power being consumed. You can launch this power monitor from the BTS GUI itself or from the start menu. We'll launch it from the GUI here. And you can see this line graph here shows how much power our Cyclone 4 GX device is consuming while it's outputting this PRBS 15 pattern we just saw on the scope. Now, a Cyclone 4 GX device uses about 30% less total system power than an equivalent Cyclone 3 device would with external transceivers. What's more, the Cyclone 4 FPGA requires only two voltage regulators. In fact, this board uses a single regulator with a dual output. That helps reduce board area and the number of other components required for your power circuitry. You've now had a chance to see some of the functionality of our Cyclone 4 GX transceiver starter kit. We hope this demo gives you some ideas on how you can take advantage of this kit's capabilities for your own design projects.